running from God. I understand that nobody in here on the first service has ever run from God except for me. No, we all have, right? Actually, part of my testimony of being called into ministry was a Jonah thing. So you might hear a little more of that as we go. But let me do a little quick re review. Uh, and all of these are online if you want to listen to it or on your app. But uh, first week we talked about the call, and this is the first chapter of Jonah. And God was basically had uh, taken a guy that was in ministry, a guy that already knew about the Lord, was very educated, actually ha could hear uh, and would communicate on uh, behalf of the Lord. He was a prophet. And God said, hey, I know you're settled and comfortable. Have your uh, four-bedroom house and your three-and-a-half-car garage. You're fine. All is well. The kids are grown. They've all passed college. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to call you to do something. And he calls him to go to a place called Nineveh. And so Jonah said, I'm going the opposite direction. I, I have other plans. If you're going to, and the reason he couldn't stay where he was at is because he was a prophet, and a prophet that says stuff that isn't the truth, uh, obviously you get stoned, and he knows if he stays and disobeyed God, he'd stop hearing. So what does he do? He gets on a ship. We talked on week two about there's always an opportunity. There's always a circumstance you can say, oh, this must be what I'm supposed to do to get away from what God asked me to do. This must be a sign. Well, there's always a ship ready to take you away from the Lord if the devil has anything to do with it. How many know people like that? Hello? Okay. Uh, so don't trust in circumstances. Uh, uh, be careful what you decide because whatever you decide, if, even if it's stepping away from God, there's going to be something that will help you get there fast. Today, I want to talk about a life-saving fish or a saving fish. And let, let me just say before we totally dive in, very familiar story. In fact, so many people that don't attend church are not really churchgoers, may not even have a faith. They know some basic stories, Noah, Jonah, because they've been in the Bible Belt. We're here, and they've heard you all talking about them, or they, maybe they attended a VBS. That doesn't necessarily mean they understand it totally. So part of today's message is to equip you to be out in the world to speak in not necessarily slides and preaching style, but to have an understanding so you can take the life of Jonah and apply it to life here in this time. The other thing is, I have really a strong impression, the Lord really is saying, I'm going to do something miraculous between the two services. Somebody in here is going to get touched by the Lord in this service or next. It's a strong, strong impression. So I need to ask you also to do this. Whenever we get to familiar places, or in especially when we get towards the end, I want you to be praying that God has his way. Would everybody want, who wants to join me in that just raise your hand? God, have your way, whether it's in me or somebody else in this room. God, put into me. Don't let me dial out because I, I, everything the preacher's saying I've heard once before. Let the Holy Spirit plant something in you that is life-giving and life-changing. Amen? So we know Jonah disobeys God. Uh, God intercepts him. Isn't that funny how God love, will intercept you? Have you ever seen a, a runaway tricycle? Come on, parents, those slope driveways that go towards the road. And they're just having fun in the garage, and all of a sudden they get on the slope, and all it's like, <laughs> what do parents do? <laughs> they're running. Man, the Flash Gordon gets out there and gets that trike away from danger. So God is kind of like that. He sees us sometimes heading in a direction, and he will intercept us just at the right time. But here's what happens, though. If God loves us, he also brings obe uh, disobedience. When we're disobedient, he brings um, constructive correction how many have ever had to have an attitude adjustment how many came today need one no no don't raise your hand um my wife went he, pointing you know you're not supposed to apply to point okay uh but he talks so 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 at the right time we we realized last week that that it got to a point of where uh, jo, uh jonah asked the, the 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 crew in the in the boat to throw him overboard and they did and and here's what happens. We're, we pick it up at the very last verse of chapter 1, and then we're going to look at really at chapter 2 today. And the Lord appointed a great fish. We don't know if it's a whale or not. It was just big. Think how big it'd have to be to swallow me. <laughs> and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Chapter 2, verse 1. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord. Hey, can you imagine you're now in the ocean... And it's way, has anybody ever swam, swam in open ocean? It's not as easy as swimming in a swimming pool because you have waves. 
And depending on what's the swells, you've you got a lot to deal with. So he's, he, he, he prayed, right? He got thrown in there. But then all of a sudden, he was uh, engulfed by this fish, this large uh, water creature. And, and in the belly of the fish, he said, he called out to the Lord. This is verse 2, out of his distress, and he answered me. He's saying, look, I called out to the Lord. He answered me, and out of the belly of shale or shoal or, or hell, I cried out. And you heard my voice, verse 3, for you cast me in the deep into the heart of the seas and the flood surrounded me all your waves and all the billows passed over me then i said i've been driven away from your sight yet i shall again look upon your holy temple the waters closed in closed in over me to take my life the deep surrounded me weeds were wrapped around my head and the roots of the mountains i went down to the land who bears or who bars closed upon me forever yet everybody say yet I like that. It, those therefores and buts in the Bible are a great thing. Yet you brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Those who, what? Pay regard to the vain idols, forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I, say but I, but I will rejoice. I will have the voice of thanksgiving with sacrifice to you, what I vow to you, I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Let's say it together, that last phrase. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the fish, and the fish burped him up. I added those words, okay. But he burped him into, he put him out on dry land. It's kind of crazy, kind of a crazy story. In fact, some people say, well, that's just a, a myth or a tale. It's not really true, you know. Uh, you know the Bible. Here's the interesting thing. Jesus refers to Jonah when he speaks what's going to happen in his own life. We find that in Matthew chapter 12 where he says, look, as Jonah was in three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man, meaning Jesus, will be there three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jonah was a true story, a miraculous story story see Jonah experienced three miracles think about it I, I think you could easily d define them with me first of all he had been thrown overboard he was drowning he was going down and a fish goes Oop. good size gulp okay now he's inside of a fish he survives three days and three nights in a fish later when we go into next chapter and next series uh, next week or so we're going to imagine people seeing a guy that has been in the belly of a whale the decomposition of his clothes and the smell you'd turn to jesus anyway wouldn't you just whoo, go away and then the fish vomit on dry land it's kind of neat so when we look at Jonah chapter 2, this is kind of helping us put place this in our own lives. It tells us who God saves. Who does God save? You say, well, the guilty sinners. How many in here is guilty of sin prior to Jesus? All. You say, well, now, wait a second. I thought this was one of those churches that didn't bring conviction. I'm not saying it. The Bible says it, and the Holy Spirit's the only one doing the convicting, right? The guilty sinner, and we're all guilty. Here it is. He, he, look at Jonah. He's acknowledging his guilt. He says, you, you hurled me into the, the deep, into the very heart of the seas and the currents. He, he says, look, the breakers was sweeping over me. He's, he's speaking to this. He recalls what happened when he first hit the water. He, these waves are coming on the surface of the water. Yes, he was there, but he tries to keep his head above water and if we apply it to today how many of us have just thrashed and thrashed and thrashed to keep our head above some situation above the water and before long we got so tired that we begin to sink in despair every one of us probably has found that in our life maybe not in the ocean maybe it's in a relationship situation this guilty, this, this realization, we, we, we think guilt is some kind of thing connected to shame, but guilt is a judgment. And we've all been judged without Christ. And it says later inside the fish, he thinks about what happens, and he says, God did this. He doesn't talk about the crew. He realizes this was an intersection and in, that God was bringing uh, 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 to, to his rebellion, to his running from God. Hmm. He doesn't... He says, I see the hands of God. That's what he's re reflecting on. You know, it's interesting how we view things, the lenses we view, th look through. See, some, sometimes people say, oh, you look at what happened. You know, I was just lucky. You tap that three times, rub the, 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 the bunny rabbit foot, whatever. We've done this, we've done that. I always mark this, I always do that, I always win when I use my lucky coin. Or, 
lucky or unlucky. That is how some people view situations. Other people say, no, actually, I'm the one that made this happen. It was my intellect. It was my timing. It was my astute training. I was able to seize the moment, carpe diem. I don't know why Fisher always in things. Carp, never mind. That's, that's not good. But, um, um. but Jonah didn't say it was luck, no, 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 or bad luck. or He didn't say, oh, it was something he controlled. He says he knew uh, it wasn't the crew. Uh, he could see beyond that, and he could see beyond the storm. He realized God was at work in his life, uh, exposing sin, exposing his judgment and confronting his rebellion. And he knew he was in the water. Jonah was in this water because of what? Not everybody else in all the situations and gas prices or whatever. He was in his own situation because of sin and rebellion. And I hate to say this, the person you're sitting to holds just as much sin and rebellion somewhere in their life as you do. Did I just say that? Some of you are like, well, we're not, we're, we're not going to like him anymore. I probably have more than you, sin and rebellion, right? Jonah has, was in ministry, but he was suppressing some sin or some guilt for a long time. And, and, and in the water, it kind of brought him to the end of his rope. He, he becomes, comes to his senses, and he sees his own sin clearly. He realizes what he's been running from. He realizes what he hasn't been uh, faithful in doing the commitments that he had made to the Lord. And he's under judgment. But I love this about our Lord. God saves us. God saves you and I when we come to the place owning our sin before him see we 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 want to fix it ourselves but we sometimes have to realize it's just my flesh it's just not of god and here he is talking about the waves or your waves and your judgment and and these situations and so what we see is god not only saves the guilty which i and you are all guilty before christ but he also saves the believing sinner from inside the fish, Jonah prayed the, to the Lord his God. He's inside. It's past tense. He's looking back. He was in distress. He cried out when he was on the water. The interesting thing, I thought about this, uh, fighting for your life. I, I, uh, I can remember various moments where I fought a lot against man or against the, the, you know, the man. Or Has anybody ever wrestled the world? Has anybody really wrestled their situation? Jonah gets all the way to the point of realizing that I can't do it. I know in this room, and I can tell you in the second service and probably across this world where people are gathering in the name of the Lord, there are people that have really found out that they, they can't do it anymore. They're at the end of their rope. There's no more hope. I've lost hope. I'm in despair. And Jonah had got there. He prays, and he, 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 but he, had, he feels God is so far away. He's like, how could God like me? I've been in rebellion. I've been running. You, you don't realize where I've been, and, and yet God won't listen to me. But I'm going to trust him. I'm going to fight for my life and cry out to God. I want to put my hope somewhere that's beyond me. If you're like me, when I first was being drawn by the Lord into a faith, I had all the reasons why not to. It was going to cramp my style. It was going to cause my friendships to not think, to think I'm a little off. I mean, I had my drinking buddies, you know, excuse me, my <clears throat> recreational buddies. Preachers aren't supposed to do that, right? Life, uh, uh, yet like Jonah, he's realizing that things are hanging in a, in a tough place. He's about to lose his life, and he's fighting for his life. And so the message for us and to anybody else is dare to hope in the Lord. Well, I'm scientifically minded. Dare to hope in the Lord. We may be in times where gas prices are over $5 a gallon. Dare to hope in the Lord. I don't know who's going to take office next term. And da, da, da. Dare to hope in the Lord, folks. We have a God that's bigger than all that, and we've got to place our hope in the right place. And here is Jonah. He's going to dare to hope in God. And he begins to reflect on what he knew of him. Sometimes when we're at the end of our hope and it's just tough. What we'll do is remember what we know. And sometimes we don't know a lot, but we remember that God's a loving God, a compassionate God, slow to anger, abounding in love. We begin to, to realize what he has in mind for us, how he loves us. And the amazing thing I find is that we don't have to clean ourselves up. 
We don't have to get all, well, I got to get my, my, my nicer jeans on to go to church because then I can't, I'm really, you know, God wouldn't hear me if I had dirty jeans on. That's, you know, the theological word for that? Hogwash. Yeah, it's in the back of the Bible next to maps. <laughs> Cleaning up your life before God saves you is like swimming to shore and then him sending you a canoe, okay? Just think about that. You don't need the canoe anymore, all right? That's not salvation, all right? That, uh, so we, God saves the guilty sinner. He saves the believing sinner. He saves the desperate sinner. Desperation. Think about the, the waters were, were threatening me and the deep surrounded me. In verse 5, what happens when Jonah believes? What, what's going on? It gets worse. <laughs> if you've never said yes to Jesus, I hope you don't get discouraged right here. There's more coming. Well, why would I want Jesus if it's going to get worse? It actually gets better. But initially, it gets worse because he, he, he's caught in this thing. His strength is gone. He's still sinking. He, you know, some of us that are believers, we hit some hard places and we lose kind of our faith a little bit or it gets weak because it's not resolving quick enough. So we begin to stop trusting God and we begin to reach for that or make compromising decisions this way. Has, have you, do you know anybody down the road that's ever done that? Just keeping you all out of hot water, Okay. He's going down. He was going down before the rescue of the fish came. I know some people for sure in this congregation that feel like they're on their way down. They've all, if they haven't hit rock bottom, they see it coming. And, and, and that's before they had the answer to the Lord. Jonah didn't see the fish coming. He might have passed out. We don't know that. But we know that God saves people who can't save themselves. As long as you think you can save yourself, God's going to let you try. You know, a lifeguard won't go and rescue something, somebody if they're still thrashing. They'll stay just far enough away and watch you get all tired, and then they can rescue you. How many of us have found ourselves thrashing and thrashing? God, won't you help me? And he's like, if you'll stop, if you'll let me, if you'll give me authority over your rescue, you'll be rescued. And it sure saves a lot of time. I'm a slow learner, though. I've wrestled with God. I fought God, and so he gives me some room. It's not about getting our act together. It's not about becoming better in your human behavior. You can't save yourself. You can't. And until you realize that, God's going to let you flop around until you get desperate. That's true faith, isn't it? Isn't that true part of the gospel is believing that you need a Savior? hold on a minute god i've got i got a little more energy left let me try it my way first he's like okay okay some of you're still thrashing some of you still saying i let me have a little more room and then i'll bring you in god's waiting the good thing is he's waiting he loves you he's ready to rescue you god saves not only guilty believing and desperate but man, the repentant sinner. Jonah's all these, by the way. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. So many times when we are going to need Jesus, but we never turn, we never repent, we never let go of old life patterns and turn to the new. We want the bumper sticker and we want the socialization and we want the good place for our kids, but God wants you. And the way he gets you is he says, I know where you're at. I found you right where you are. I loved you right where you are. I saved you right. But because you've reached out to me, part of it is repenting or turning around. There is a faith, yes, but there's a repentance. Here's what a repentance is. You're heading that way. I don't know if I can do the military style. I almost did it, yeah. Okay. Because uh, here's what happened. He gets burped out on the ground. Excuse me. What, would, what do fish do when they... Is burp okay? Is that a good word? I don't know if you're saying you know, yeah. He didn't jump on the next ship to Tarshish, did he? He didn't get back to what he was doing. He, he decided to go to Nineveh. He decides to be obedient to what God's commanded him to do. And he goes to Nineveh. Salvation involves a change in the direction of your life. 
Part of who, who you're living for changes. Part of what you are grasping for changes. Your ladder may be on this wall. He may turn around and lean it on this wall. If you're trying to climb the ladder of success, he said, let me, let me share with you that there's a better success. It's turning away from whatever had his place in your life. That's what part of repenting is. And, and Jonah begins to, to turn. He begins to really face the new direction. And he, what is, happens naturally? He begins to worship. Chapter 2 is about worship. And he says, but I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I vowed I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. He's worshiping. Imagine the venue. We always talk about, do we have the right lighting and the right air conditioning and the right backdrops and the right slides and the motion graphics? And the... He's in a way, or a big fish. He's back down in there worshiping right in the middle of that stinky mess. Some of you all are in stinky messes. Are you worshiping? You... That's a great worship venue, God thinks, wherever you're at. He begins to worship. It's uncomfortable, but he begins to worship. He knows God is saving him. He knows how in the world am I in a fish and breathing. God may have you in a place that's transitional. Celebrate that God's got his hands on your life. He's going to rescue you. He's already in the process of saving you through that. Some people have asked me about baptism. You know, what's that all about? Here's a great picture. When Christ saves you, when, he, when you say yes to that, and you're, there's a spiritual death that goes on, and then there's a resurrection. That's the symbol of baptism. You go down into the water, that's death. When you come back out of the water, that's raised to walk in newness of life. That's what happened with Jesus. He was crucified. He died. He was buried, but he came to life again. Amen? So what's our response today? Pursue. Pursue. Pursue the truth of the loving God in your situation like you would pursue a blue light special. Or as you would pursue figuring out what they meant by that on Facebook or TikTok or whatever your thing is. P pursue like somebody at school has roughed up your kid and you're going after them. Some of you all know what that is, mama bears. What's our, what's our response to pursue? See, God's ready, and he's able to save you for an eternity, but he's also ready today to save you in your situation. I don't know where you find yourself, but he's inviting you. So I have four things that I'm going to see if you're willing to do. Are you willing to confess that you have have had or currently are dealing with sin in your life there's no show of hands on through this i just want to have you inside yourself answer that question will you confess to god today now you can use any words you want mine probably say i'm a, the head sinner head knucklehead i have a rebellious nature in me of having it my way and i don't care it's my way or the highway I really th like it when God assists me, but I have a plan. Because it's up to me if it's going to be. You know all that I had to repent of, and I have to probably do it regularly because I'm a type A, type personality, type D, driven, ask my staff. But the key is that I own it. I realize I need to bring it before him. Are you willing to take that step today? Number two, will you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ today. Believe, trust. Will you, will you believe him is different than trusting. We're going to come to that. Believing that the Son of God loved you. This is a time you should be praying that God does a supernatural work either this service or next or whatever he's up to because there are people you would just assume already know all this. And sometimes we know it up here, but we've never let it be real here. God did love you, and God did send his Son for you. And that he went to the cross as a perfect lamb to pay your price and my price. He died. He was buried, but he rose again by the supernatural resurrection power of God. Will you ask Jesus to save you? Are you desperate enough? Or you just need a little more time and then you'll check on, you know, get back with him? Jesus is here and he's available. The third thing is, will you trust him? 
I can believe in something and never put my trust in it. I can believe that chair will hold me, but until I put my <clears throat> blessed assurance right there in that chair, it's never really tested. Your situation, whatever you find yourself in, are you ready to trust him? This starts applying to not just those that don't have a faith, but it applies to all of us, doesn't it? Are you trusting him in your situation right now? Jonah trusted God at the bottom of the ocean. He trusted him in the belly of the whale. I don't know where you find yourselves, but you can trust him. So I'm inviting all of us, all of us, to trust him more today. No matter what the outcome is, will you trust him? That's a decision you make right today. These are some great verses. Never leave you or forsake you. I'm going to trust you through things. I, I, if you confess, believe in your heart, confess your mouth, you're saved. I mean, you can lean on these. You can grasp this. My grace is sufficient for you. Wait a minute, but you don't realize my bank account isn't, but his grace is. Amen? Hang on to those things. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him and you'll never be put to shame, Isaiah says. We worry about what people will think if they just knew. And I know some of you have taken recently some bold steps. It's good that you took those steps. If God led you and you stepped out and it doesn't fit the world of consumerism, God will bless you. God is blessing you. He's saving you progressively along the way. Number four, I know, I wish you all would have me just pull over and stop here, but here's the fourth one. Ready? Everybody hold up four fingers. Commit. Woo! Really? Commit. Will you commit to turn from all that God says is wrong? Will you commit to pursue all that God says is good? Well, Pastor, I'm a 95% committed Christian. That 5%, I just can't get by. I just can't because I'm hooked to the Internet and it just pops up. Take the computer and throw it in the trash if you cannot overcome that 5%. It's like having a boat and saying, I only have 5% of the hull missing and we'll make it. Keep bailing. Let's all stand. The reason I wanted us to stand is I want to give us some mobility room here. I, I, I just, I was praying before the service this morning, walking up and down like I do, and I just sensed there are some, there's a number of, there's a, there's a number of situations in this room. And God is standing so ready. So I'm going to ask um, us to pray, but I'm going to ask us to be ready for God to do a work in this room. Remember in the very beginning, I asked, would you be willing? Everybody raise their hand. So either you're going to be praying to the Lord yourself about you, or you're praying for somebody next to you. Don't assume just because you brought them that God didn't work in something out in them. For some of you, it's a physical thing. For some of you, it's an emotional thing. For some of you, it's a relational thing. For some of you, it's a financial thing. For some of you, or maybe all of us, it's a spiritual thing. And there may be someone in here that has never really decided that I need a Savior. I mean, not, it's nice to have, you know, but I can always get a different insurance policy. I need a Savior that's the almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving God. I need one of those, and I need it like I need breath. I would hate for you to leave today without that decision between you and God happening. But this message is beyond just a salvation message of the moment of your eternity. This is being set free. 
asking for the supernatural God to intervene right where you're at. So I don't know what you're facing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest that if you've got something, you don't even have to admit what it is, but either step into the aisle, raise your hand, or come on up here, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some of the elders, and I just, we're just going to pray over some situations, okay? Again, keep praying. Not, nobody checks out at this point. I don't care what your age is. You don't have to come up here. Just, just move into motion that God wants to touch your life. How many in here know somebody in this room God wants to touch their life? We all do. Guess what? It may be you. I'm trying to listen. <laughs> this is, I'm off notes now, by the way. You notice I run out of slides. God is communicating right now to this room and you're wrestling something so I'm going to I'm going to change this around because I believe in the power of God right we all believe in the power of God I'm going to ask you to ask the Lord are you hearing something about somebody else in this room that they need prayer for. I want you to open up your mind and antenna, your spirit, and, and God, I'm going to name some things off, and, and if you heard that in your spirit, one of the things I'm going to name off, I'm not trying to play games here, guys, pr promise you. I'm trying to have us dial into what the Holy Spirit's doing. But if, let's say, Laurie's fine, this is my wife here, and I say a name, but when I, she asked the Lord, she heard that loud that somebody in this room absolutely needed to be touched in that arena. Then I'm going to ask her to just come up and stand over here. That doesn't mean she needs that help, but she just felt in her spirit somebody in this room needs it, and she's going to stand in stead or stand in the inter intercessory position for God to move on that person. Does that sound good? Now, it could be some of you say, no, that's me. You come stand there too. Do you see what we're doing here? This is the body of Christ. I dropped a, a paving stone on one of my toes. Do you know all the other toes chimed in with, that hurts! They, were, they didn't get whacked. The body is supposed to respond to other parts of the body, right? We're just going to practice this just a little bit. Or maybe you just know somebody carnally you just know you've got a family member that that's what they're struggling with we got plenty of time folks i'm way ahead man when i can do a 13 minute message last week god can take the last 13 minutes of this time and do something special are you ready so here in a minute you're welcome to sit yourself back down or get on your knees or respond but what i want right now is ask the lord bow your heads and say lord Open my mind, open my spirit to hear you, Lord. I first want to hear from myself, find any wicked way would be within me, anything that I have not yet turned over to you. If that's me, I want to respond. But Lord, if there's somebody in this room that I know needs this touch from the Lord, Lord's going to touch that, then you come up also and stand in their stead, and we're going to pray over that. Does that... And we just, just keep that in mind, keep that in mind. So I'm going gonna, gonna to ask Pastor Tyler if you'll come over here. And, and so where he's standing is he's going to stand at, that somebody is standing with, a, with hopelessness. They need hope. There's just a hopelessness right now. If you know, if you're sensing there's somebody here that needs hope, or it's you, come stand over here with Pastor Tyler. My wife, Laurie, is going to stand here, and I'm going to, your, your relation, you have a relational, a damaged relationship that God, that only God can take care of. You have a, there's someone, and I don't even know what it is, but there's someone that is hurting relationally, if you'll stand here with with Laurie.
is Elder Curtis. You sense somebody's under spiritual attack or you feel there's warfare right now in your life. There's just something you can't figure out, but it, it's, it's bigger than what you can understand. Or you see somebody that it's just constantly, um, there's a tormenting in their life. You know somebody or it's in your, come stand here with Curtis. I'm going to step down here and if I'm going to say that if you know somebody that needs Jesus you know somebody that maybe has a, a religion but they don't really have Jesus and you want to stand in their stead that we would pray for them just join me And I know healing could be very broad. Uh, healing of the mind, the heart, the body. Just come and join somebody. We're going to pray now. And each person, if you don't mind just starting a prayer of those people focused on that, that area of focus, and then I'll wrap us up here in just a minute. And everybody out here, just pray that God would have his way. Amen? Some of you may say... I'm, this is interesting. Let God speak to you even through this time. Okay, so join me as we pray. I'm going to turn this off for just a second. Thank you that you're alive, Lord, today. Thank you that you're moving across this world of all that lift your name up high. And we, we honor you. We glorify you, Lord. Father, thank you that our spirit can be in tune with your spirit, Lord, and it's one, and we can hear impressions in our heart. Thank you for each one of these arenas and there's more, Lord, where you're wanting to intersect. You want to send the rescuing element and it may continue for a few days until it's resolved. But Lord, you're dispatching today in this moment through these prayers, through the faith of these people, that an almighty God is moving. We look forward to, to watching you work, Lord. We know you can do it you're capable, you're ready. And so in faith, we believe. Father, we pray you put your arms around each situation, each individual, that you would lead them closer to your heartbeat, that you would transform each of us in such a way that we're more in tune with you than we are with our flesh. 
that they become more in tune with you than this world. Father, thank you for the story of Jonah, how it can speak to us. Now help us use that in our lives to bring forth your light to this world. We praise you, we love you, Lord, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If this morning you, for the first time ever, said yes to Jesus, I'm going to stay up here for a few minutes. I'd love to just talk with you. No pressure. But God's good, amen? How, how, when, when is he good? And all the time? I, we hadn't done that in forever. Wasn't that good? Thank you all for um, being here today. Make sure and go out as the church, filled with his spirit and the light, because there's a world that needs him. Amen? Now, as we go, be our power and strength and peace, we pray in Jesus' name. You're dismissed.